Welcome back to Eager Reviews, guys. I'm Eddie. I'm Jet. And I'm Oos. And today we'll be reviewing Black Adam. So with the superhero genre, a hit or miss for the year with, with things like the Batman being an absolute masterpiece and things coming out such as Morbius and Thor Love and Thunder. Did Black Adam really change the hierarchy of the DC universe? I've been feeling really fatigued with superhero movies. You know, Black Adam tries to bring stuff to the table. I don't think it did anything in that regard. I feel like Black Adam is your run of the mills, early 2000s, cheesy summer blockbuster that came out in October. We should be comparing this film to films such as Shazam, which are kind of kid friendly, PG-13, run of the mill. You have The Rock, you have Zachary Levi, so. Black Adam was actually intended for a R-rated audience. There was no R-rated scenes in that movie. I don't think characters necessarily need a accurate comic presence. Although he embodies what a Black Adam character is supposed to be, I don't think he really fulfilled or was Black Adam. Comes off more of a confused puppy. More than a superhero or a anti-villain to even say the least. Yeah, it's a very generic comic book movie that you've seen countless times. You've seen one of them, you've seen them all. It's also following this trend of, you know, anti-heroes, but at the end of the day, they're just regular heroes. What makes him an anti-hero is just that they kill people. Which is one of the worst flaws you can have in your anti-hero movie. Venom gotta go, Black Adam gotta go, Kramer the Hunter, they're just awful. Morbius. It wasn't all bad. Uh, besides The Rock having no hair, no Kondok accent, and just being in a state of confusion the whole movie, there were some shining parts to this, such as the kills. They were very creative. The action, I could see what was going on throughout the screen, and it didn't feel like there was like a crazy amount of weird CGI. Axel. Astrid. I said Axel. The CGI from Black Adam is actually kind of superb. However, once it gets to that third act, it's just straight up Scorpion King level CGI. <laughs> I cannot remember the villain's name. I'm sure you can't. I'm sure you can't. <laughs> <Just seen it. laughs> the villain in this is so poorly done that I will take Morbius' villain any day of the week. Although Pierce Brosnan really delivered a good performance as him. Dr. Fate is really cool in this. However, he's very underutilized and he's not really the Dr. Fate we know and love. I thought the action scenes really gave you like a sense of power. Yes. That's all I really wanted from this movie. Painted Black is playing and The Rock is just blowing up tanks and cars and it's freaking awesome to see. DC loves using their licensed music and I think it kind of works here. The licensed music didn't annoy me. I was enjoying myself and I'm like, you know what? This movie is not that bad, but it was just getting very tiresome. And it's like, I've seen this already. I don't want to continue with it. They shouldn't have continued with were the unnecessary side plots with Adam Smasher and Wind Girl <laughs> but one person that really stole this movie for me was Hawkman. I love everything about Hawkman, from his costume design to his fights. This is like the one character I truly felt was ripped from the comics. Hawkman and Black Adam are punching each other in the sky, and it was a direct reference to this one comic. Hawkman is prideful, he's furious, he always wants to throw hands, and I love the dynamic between him and Black Adam. That was probably the strongest part about the entire movie. Absolutely, and I feel like Aldous Hodges, who played Hawkman, just really gave a shit about that character. I have no clue. I have no damn idea. I just eat, fam. I think the bar for superhero movies is just set up super high now. We get movies such as Logan, First Iron Man, Infinity War, Spider-Verse, Batman, and it's kind of hard to go back. There's not much complexity when it comes to the actual Black Adam character himself, which sucks because I go to see these anti-hero movies to, you know, learn some more about the moral gray area. Like, why is your entire stick that you kill people. 
I don't want to keep going into these movies shutting my brain off. I want a compelling story with compelling characters. When people say just shut your brain off, you know you're getting something into. I understand that and I love my action popcorn flicks, but I still want more to that. More where I can just engage myself and still have a good time. You knew that there were no consequences in this movie. Someone dies, they're coming back. Someone gets shot, they're getting healed. Throughout the whole movie, I'm just sitting here knowing that I'm watching the movie. It cares more about like how many cuts we could insert within 60 seconds. Like it's very easy on the attention span. It kind of knows it's not going to draw you in. So it's just trying to get to the action as fast as possible. Because of that, a lot of other aspects of this movie just straight up suffer. There's some good moments and sequences, but for a two hour movie, it's just kind of unbearable sometimes. There were no daddies in this movie at all none at all so my eyes were just <laughs> my attention already was very low if i had to go through looking at the rock with his black suit again i was just going to So the post credit, the thing that was spoiled way worse than No Way Home by the man himself. <laughs> what do you think about it? The post credit scene for some reason got me hyped for Henry Cavill's return to the DCEU or DCU or DC. I don't know what's going on at this point. I disliked the post credit scene for the simple fact that I felt like, again, it's a blockbuster move to bring in Superman. Everybody's going to come see them. People are mostly there to see other things besides the movie. And that's dumb. I feel like a better post credit would have had Shazam pop up. I feel like Shazam is the best DCEU film. So. Hopefully we get Batflick back. Overall, what would you rate this film out of five, John Carl? Two out of five. Cool. Yeah. I kind of wanted to sleep at a lot of points throughout this film. I did get woken up once explosions started happening and people started punching each other, but that's all this movie really is. Some people like that. Enjoy this movie for what it is. Although I didn't like this movie, I like the direction it's heading. So that's a two out of five for me. I'd have to go a little bit higher and just give it a 2.5 out of 5. Just because it's a very bare bones, generic superhero movie. This movie is very frustrating for me. It has its points. And I'm excited to see The Rock as Black Adam again. Can't wait to see that versus Henry Cavill. Uh, I'm going to go a little higher and give it a 3. It's not great. I know what to expect when I see The Rock on screen. I'm not very excited about seeing The Rock in this costume again. I feel like the highs were very high and they made me feel I'm actually enjoying this movie, but the lows were so low that I'm like, I'm actually watching this movie, damn. But at the end of the day, it's a film that you can go see with your girlfriend, your sister, your brother, your mother, your grandma, enjoy it. <laughs> That's our review of Black Adam. Where you go? Shazam. Things will never be the same because the hierarchy of power in the DC universe is about to change. Amaris, shut the fuck up. <laughs>